Slam have brought out their new Tosby group set. Everyone knows about it. It's been on loads of buys. I've done a video about this before, being pretty much everyone else to it. Uh, but anyway, I didn't haven't got to try it yet, so didn't beat any of these boys to it. So you can see some of these, you know, TT group set, um, cost group set, disc brakes, rim brakes, um, clutch bridge railer, things like that. Anyway, in my opinion, most of it looks pretty sick. Um, but the thing that really has caught my eye is the whole gear range and everything else. So we'll go to the main picture, and I think it looks stunning. I think that this the whole chain set unbelievable. I'm a big fan. Derailer looks a bit dumb, I reckon, but um, you know, each to their own. I feel like that derailer just looks a bit like meh. Um, the front derailer looks chill. Um, but anyway, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, saying they've got an extra sprocket. So what Campagnolo did is just, well, we've got an extra sprocket. So when we have an 1128, we'll just add another tooth. I think it might be a 15, maybe they put in or something. But uh, anyway, I didn't really think about it that much. Um, and I think Shimano when they did the mountain biking, well, actually, we won't talk about mountain bikes because we can talk about it now. But anyway, basically what. Sram were like, well, for mountain biking, we have a 10 tooth, so why don't we do the same for a road? And then you could have a bigger range. So, what they have is basically a 50 37 and a 10 26, which is equivalent to a 50 39 11 25, which to be honest, no one uses like literally no one I like I've ever seen in the pro peloton riding outside, unless you literally live in somewhere where there are no hills at all. But you might as well go one by, so I still don't get it. So, literally, no one rides this ratio, but apparently. You know, this is what they do. Semi-compact, which most people have. Um, so you can do a 48, 35 and a 10, 28. So I, in some ways I get it, in some ways I don't. The one thing I don't understand is 50, 34, 11, 32. It's like, well, yeah, but wouldn't, for me, wouldn't, instead of having a 10 to 33, I'd rather have an 11 to like 34 or something slightly bigger um, that way. But maybe, I don't know, maybe people don't. Uh, this is quite interesting. So they just compare what Shimano has. Um, so you can see for 11, 28. I've got this, this, I mean, this is, standard. I mean, every, most people run 11.28, some people run 11.30, um, and then others run 11.32, but I'd say, you know, 80% is probably this, 10% that, 10% that, and then, you know, the rest is sort of negligible. Um, so yeah, anyway, yeah, you can see here, four one-tooth jumps, but obviously one-tooth jump isn't super important, because obviously a one-tooth jump between a 28 and a 29 is a tiny jump, but a one-tooth jump between a 10 and 11 is actually a slightly bigger jump. Uh, but anyway, basically saying you get closer range. So you can see you have a 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, which you only get on the 11, 25. So it's basically saying on the 10, 26, you have the same as an 11, 25, but obviously, you know, bigger range. Um, I think this is pretty interesting. I think it's a good shout um, having wider ratios. I'm just not sure a 10 tooth is really necessarily the best way of doing about it because a 10 tooth is not going to be very efficient. There's a reason why pro riders run 58 tooth chain rings. It's not because they're spinning out a 54, 11. It's because you get more efficient chain line, and also, well, you get more efficient chain line, and also it's better when you have bigger cogs. So a fifty-eight like twenty is better than like a fifty-four sixteen or something, you know, something like that. Um, so yeah, it's it's a bit mysterious. Um, but we'll just keep scrolling down. Chain looks slightly different. It's more like not figure of eighty anymore. They said. Um, but yeah, they've changed the ratio of discs. Don't care. This looks quite cool if you happen to ride off road. Um, it's like a dampener, so instead of having a clutch mechanism which keeps tension, it sort of has dampener, so if, you, if it pushes, if you hit the ground and it pushes the derailleur one way, it just won't let it bend, um, which is quite clever. App, you can do synchro shift, if you, in case you don't know how to shift, which on ETAP is incredibly easy, then um, yeah, you can use a synchro shift, but anyway. Um, and then this is saying, actually, the, the teeth apparently on each cassette like, are now further apart, so it makes less noise, apparently. Um, and then it's just saying, you know, it saves some weight, uh, which again on the cassette is not really hugely important. Um, you're not really going to feel it a couple of grams on the cassette. Quite like this TT ring. Reckon that's a that's pretty sick. Big fan of that. 58, big boy on that. Um, and then saying the power me is accurate, but I mean, I don't. He wasn't testing with pedal power, so no one knows. But it, it's quite so. I reckon it. I reckon it'll be good. Um, but yeah, with a road one by sub, you could have a 1051 rear block, which to be fair would be good. Like, I reckon, I reckon people are gonna see this. We'll go back to the chart because I think that's the most important thing. I think you know the derailleur is slightly better. The derailleur is this. I mean, no one really. That's that's not more most important thing. I think the more important thing about and more more interesting thing in my opinion is uh, all about the cassettes and how they've changed it to a 10. And I reckon what people will do um, is maybe have it like if I had a 1033. I could then pair it with like, I don't know, if you have then a 52, 36, and then you'd have an absolute huge gears. You'd have like way bigger range than I have now. Um, so I reckon 
yeah, that's probably the future in in reality is um having actually not doing what they've done, which is have smaller on the front. I think keep the fifty three thirty nine, but then just pair it with like a ten twenty eight or a ten thirty three. Um, so I reckon what will happen maybe is that pros will go more for like a 52, 36, 10, 28. And then that's really low gearing for them. That's a, like significantly lower. And then ratio will be great. And then you'll have a huge top end gear. Because a lot of guys in races are now putting 54s on because like in the tour especially, they, they ride the last couple kilometers at all like 60 k's an hour, sometimes more. And I remember them saying in the tour this year, like people are putting 54, 55 cha- tooth chain rings. So in some ways that would make sense. And also on the descent, you know, it's, it's just better. Like people always say, oh, you're not going to spin out. It's like, yeah, well, try ride at 60 k's an hour at 400 watts at like 115, 120 k's. It's, it's not comfortable. So I reckon that's what they'll do. I'm not sure if the 50, 37 will be. Maybe SRAM will be, it won't happen. I don't know. But in my opinion, I think, There'll be some changing with this. Um, yeah, and I, I reckon if I was an amateur now, um, and I had to get one, I'd get the 5037 paired with the 1033 probably. And then that would be really low gearing. I, I reckon I'd just do that, and then you get the same as, um, the, you get the same top end as a 53, and a, a lower, uh, probably a lower end than what I've got now on my 503632. So I reckon that would be, be the thing for me to do. Um, but anyway, what's your opinion? Is the gearing actually good? Have they fucked it up by making it too small? Uh, what do you think of the aesthetics? Like, obviously, that's a pretty important thing, in my opinion. If it doesn't look good, no one's going to buy it. Um, so, yeah. Cost, I mean, if you have to think about it, you probably can't afford it, to be honest, or shouldn't be paying for it. I mean, if you're not willing to drop, you know, a couple of kale groups out, then, you know, I mean, like, that's that's what it is. But I have heard, um, confirmed that Force ETAP is coming out, um... Uh, later this year i believe it's april um was what i was hearing and then we have some weights again if you're really caring about weights like this i mean unless you're in a hill climb bike it's sort of irrelevant um and then some things let's just have a little look at any comments see if anyone's come up with some hilarious comments i'm oh, just saying the usual things um but anyway cheers for watching hope you did enjoy this little bit about sram red What's it called? Sramrat A ETAP AXS. Um, yeah. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. You are.